Hi, welcome back. I know that you have taken a glass of water or something and you are refreshed to continue with us. We are learning about forgiveness and we are with Felix Madanga. I keep your comments coming in. I can see a bit of your comments here. Somebody is asking, how do I forgive? Or somebody, somebody else from, this is Mary from Kitengela, is asking that I find it hard to forgive when the person wrongs me once and again, times and again. Uh, so we, uh, Madanga is going to answer some of those questions. So Madanga, mm -hmm. tell us, how do I forgive? How do I forgive? I'll call that the steps to forgiving. Um, one, take the pain to Christ. That is the first step. Uh, remember, uh, you are not of your own. You are of Christ. So to forgive, number one, take the pain to Christ. Before anything else, just take the pain to Christ. Tell it as it is. Uh, Proverbs 28 will tell you, tell it as it is. Mm -hmm. Next is realize the particular heart. What has hurt you? Uh, identify that particular wound. You could ask yourself, what happened and how did I feel? What happened is the whole event. How did I feel is the particular wound. So identify the particular wound. Normally people don't know why or how they were hurt in particular. But once you take the pain to Christ, identify that particular wound. So know that, wow, this is what is hurting. The heart is because it's not the whole breakup, but the way it happened. That is the heart. So identify that wound. Once you identify that wound, you want to address it to the person who hurt you. Let them know at your convenience. When you're ready to talk about it, when you have let out the emotions, when you have cried, when you are okay, when you know your emotions will not control you, you want to address it with the person. And number four, you want to assure the person that you have forgiven them. Take the pain to Christ. Identify that particular pain. Address it to the person, but when you are ready. And the next, assure that person that you have forgiven them. Then you are completely okay. Mm. But also, uh, you know, the reason why I, I would like people to address it to the person who has forgiven them, you're opening their eyes so that next time they don't do that, so that the next time they don't hurt other people. So you're protecting yourself and you're also protecting other innocent people. But look at it, you're also helping the person become better. You're building their character. If it was a breakup and you addressed to them and told them this and this went well, but this didn't went this didn't go very well. The person will see that as a place of growth in their character. And that is a big help to them. There's something you said that yeah. I should assure them that I have forgiven yes. them. I think that's, that's the hardest part because this person, he has hurt me yeah. and now I'm going to them to tell them that I have forgiven you. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is easy? It's not easy. And that's why I said before you go to address it with them, mm -hmm. take time. Go when you're ready. Go when, the, when you can clearly state without emotions. When you are very conscious and very honest. Listen, uh, there, there's something I, I, I may not have said. Forgiveness does not mean condoning. It, it, it's not putting up with. When I condone you, it's uh, you wrong me, but I take it as lightly. When I put up with you is... You wrong me, I don't say it, but I've learned to, you know, live with you uh, anyway because I know you will hurt me. But when you address it with that person, you show them the truth. You tell them the truth, speaking the truth in love, Ephesians 4, 26. And now when you assure them, you're forgiven them. Remember, you don't have emotions, you have cried, and you know the particular pain you're addressing. That is not easy. That takes time. It's like a long journey and you are forgiving at the 41st kilometer. So it's very long. You, you talked about emotions. So it's not wrong for me to cry when I'm hurt. It's not wrong. Uh, so many people expressed their emotions in the Bible. Peter, 
when he realized he had hurt Jesus, he cried. When you don't let your emotions out, you end up like Judas. Judas, he wronged Jesus. He didn't cry about it. He didn't ask for forgiveness. He ended up taking his own life. Peter, he hurt Jesus. He realized I hurt Jesus. And he let out his emotions. Jesus, when his friend is gone, and people get hurt from so many things when they lose a loved one. So, for example, Jesus loses a loved one, Lazarus. He goes there, and the Bible says, John 11, 35, that Jesus wept. He let out his emotions. It is not wrong to let out your emotions. Cry. Be honest with yourself. And don't let the society judge you for crying. It is okay to display your emotions. Don't let them in. So it means that when we see people cry, that does not mean that they have not forgiven. It's just that they're expressing their emotions. Yes. There's something else you said about not condoning uh, the wrongdoing. Yeah. So I would want you maybe to clarify. There's something Jesus said that when you are slapped on your right cheek, mm -hmm. give the left one. Mm -hmm. So what is the difference between forgiving and that? Now, the, the context, let, let me first explain the part of condoning. Mm -hmm. Condoning means you are wronging me, but I am pretending like nothing ever happened. Oh. I am not honest. Mm -hmm. I am not being truthful. Mm -hmm. Condoning means I am pretending like, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what it matters. The truth is it matters. So condoning is wrong. Don't condone. Address it. Be truthful. Be, tell them that you have been wrong. Now, the part of being slapped on one cheek and turning on the other, Jesus simply meant that we don't have to always take revenge. Normally, when you are slapped, the quickest action would be to slap back. So Jesus said, no, 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 do not take revenge. So, so that's in, in the context, but doesn't mean condoning. Mm -hmm. Listen, even the Bible encourages in Romans 3, for example, in Romans 13, sorry, that a person should even take responsibility after being forgiven. They should take responsibility for that mistake. Mm -hmm. So it is not wrong to display your emotions. It is not wrong to cry. It is not wrong to feel hurt but address it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is forgiveness synonymous to reconciliation? Wow, um, no. No. Um, forgiveness, like I said, it is not reconciliation. Mm -hmm. I would, I would, I would uh, try and, 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 and uh, contrast forgiveness uh, with two things. Let me, a physical wound and a heart wound. Mm -hmm. A physical wound what happens when it is left for a long time? It stinks. What happens? It hurts. What happens when it heals? It leaves a mark. It leaves a dent. It leaves a scar. Same to heart wound. When they are left for a long time, they stink. They explode. When they heal, they leave a scar in the heart. You could be reconciled, but you have not forgiven. Forgiveness is voluntary. Reconciliation is sometimes forced. Yes? Yeah, like people can come and tell you the condition for us to move forward is that you reconcile with this and begin to work together. That is not forgiveness. Forgiveness could mean you have let them go, but they're not even working together with you. They're not reconciled, but you have forgiven. You've let them free, which means you're not feeling vengeful. You are not feeling, you're not feeling uh, resentful towards them. You have just let out the ill negative feelings that is forgiveness reconciliation is it could be forced it could be arranged it could be made it, it could be circumstantial but forgiveness is not is voluntary mm -hmm. yeah wow yeah. so it means that uh, after i have had a heart from somebody yeah. it is important that i forgive and also reconcile so that we work together could be mm -hmm. yes it is a plus mm -hmm. for forgiveness. Yeah. So when you wish your offender well, that's a plus. Mm -hmm. It is not a must, it's a plus. Maybe I would want to know, when a person feels that I want to forgive a certain person, yeah. and then you feel that they are not changing, do you continue forgiving them or what happens? Wow. 
Uh, yeah, there are two scenarios for that. Number one, people feel, why should I forgive someone who is not asking for forgiveness? Mm-hmm. New Bible says that while we were still sinners, mm-hmm. Christ died for us. Did he wait for us to ask for forgiveness? We were still. We were still sinners. We were still doing it. So forgiveness does not count or wait for the other person to ask or to do an action. No. Remember, I think the most important thing I want to leave our viewers with today would be forgiveness does not help the offender. It helps the victim. It helps you who has been hurt. So if people are not changing, you don't have to put up with them. You don't have to condone them. You can't address it with them. It could also mean moving, living. But in the event that they are with you for a long time, you have to keep forgiving them. The same question was asked by the disciples of Jesus Christ, that how many times should I forgive? Jesus said, 70 times 7. The essence is Jesus just ensured that you cannot keep the math. You cannot keep counting that I've forgiven one, two. It it just meant you cannot keep the math. When it's smaller, you can keep it. When it's bigger, you can't keep the math. So you keep on forgiving. But if they're not changing, it depends on the circumstances. If there are people you're living with, you may have to keep on forgiving. But be sure to address it with them. That's where the problem lies. Address it with the offender. Let them know. Let them know. So don't forgive people and you don't let them know. Let them know. Mm-hmm. Yes. Maybe even as we wrap up, I would want uh, you to address, maybe to tell us how many or other examples of uh, ills that we see in the society that mm-hmm. come from unforgiveness. Uh, lots of things. Lots of things. Terrorism. Mm-hmm. It's, it's one biggest problem that the world is grappling with. And that comes from unforgiveness. Rape mm-hmm. comes from unforgiveness. The people who are undergone rape when they were young and they just want to revenge because of the experiences they had. Murder, abortions, talk of theft, talk of suicide that we see in the society. People throw themselves down because someone was not able to forgive them. People go on stealing because they want to repay a debt because they have not been forgiven for that. But look at it. People take uh, big risks, like bombing a whole city, just because of unforgiveness. But normal, normal conflicts we see, even accidents are sometimes attached to unforgiveness. Somebody is depressed, he is holding a lot of grudges, and they cause accidents because of that. But look at the number of men and, and, and women, or uh, our family men, who have even burnt their whole family in a house because of unforgiveness. And in Kenya, we are struggling with cattle rustling. It's because of unforgiveness. Uh, Lots of ills, all ills in the society are rooted in unforgiveness. Wow. I think today we have talked so much about the the one being hurt. I I would want you to say something concerning the offender. Mm. When I need forgiveness, what do I do? Maybe sometimes I feel I've offended somebody. I need forgiveness. What can I do? Uh, for you, you have to first accept. The offender has to accept. The first step for you is to accept that you are on the wrong. Whatever the moral ground, whatever the legal grounds, if you accept you are on the wrong, you're beginning to ask for forgiveness. It's two, now take the pain to Christ. Normally, the offender sometimes has guilt and they feel remorseful. And they don't want to address it with the victim at one go. Please take the pain to Christ. Do you know why? Because he never judges you. He gives you a clean slate. He will forgive you. He will understand you. He will embrace you. You will feel loved. He will not judge you. That is Christ. Once you are from Christ, and when you are ready, address it with the victim. Mm -hmm. And consciously ask for forgiveness not as a blanket, talk about that particular offense. So say, I am sorry for stealing, not I am sorry for the wrongs I did. I am sorry for stealing your phone. For it could also mean returning or indemnifying the victim. Mm -hmm. 
There are things that cannot be returned, something like virginity, life, that cannot be returned. But if they are material things, you could take them back, you could buy them something new. If, if you stole a shirt, for example, you could replace the shirt. It, it, it means I am willing to part with the assets and the materials just to gain your forgiveness. But lastly, and this is the most difficult one, it could also mean paying for your offense legally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you are an offender of rape, it could also mean surrendering yourself to the police to pay for that offense and there's nothing wrong. These are legal systems and authority and government belongs to God, comes from God. So it could also mean paying for your offense legally. Wow. It, it, it's, a, it's a quite a long process, but I'll break it down again. Please accept yourself, accept your mistake. Take the pain to Christ, address it with the victim. If possible, indemnify them. If it was a phone, material, glass, whatever, indemnify them. And five, now take responsibility. Pay for your offense. Yes, surrender to the police or take whatever punishment that is there. It could also mean going to jail. It's that tough. But it will mean you're forgiven. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's our time today in studio with Felix Madanga. And even as we wrap up, I want you to look at this camera yeah. and maybe talk to that person at home who really feels that uh, they have been carrying bitterness in them because of something that was done. Maybe in 30 seconds or 20 seconds, just say something to them. I have said this before, and I will say it again. Forgiveness does not help the offender. It helps you as the victim. Remember, Christ has already forgiven you. Do not carry the baggage of unforgiveness. Release yourself. Wow. Thank you so much. So, viewers, as you heard that, that forgiveness does not belong to the offender. It belongs to you. It is going to benefit you. It is going to help you. That is why we are going to overcome some of those ills that we talked about, rape, accidents, depression, sicknesses. Actually, as he said, that most of the diseases that we have around come from unforgiveness. So, save yourself from that. As much as you are eating well, as much as you are exercising, also exercise forgiveness to keep fit, to keep well and healthy. See you next time. My name is Tony Ravel.